Bob Nagy, AB5N here with another equipment review, this time sort of just an overview, and this is the ICOM 7610 SDR transceiver, a radio that I have not seen as much buzz about in decades. I can't think of another radio there's been this much anticipation about. So it's hit the shelves, it's being distributed in the U.S. Now you're going to see a lot of reviews out there, features and functions, how to make it operate, and that's the first run we're seeing. And the next thing we're going to see is the receiver lab tests. We're going to have the Sherwood test, we're going to have Adam Farson take it apart and tell us the real numbers of how this thing's performing. I figured I'd come from a different angle because in the end there's only one question. Should you buy one of these? So I'm going to talk about um, several different aspects of the radio towards that end. And I think we've got three groups of people watching a video like this. You've got people who have never had an SDR or are looking to maybe jump into it with a nice box with knobs. You have people with ICOM 7300s that are thinking maybe it's time to upgrade should they make the move. And then you've got people who bought it 7610 and are sort of watching all the videos to feel a little bit better about being an early adopter, paying that early list price. So I'm gonna look at how this rig is to operate. On the ground, hands on the ground, how does this thing feel to operate as compared with a super het radio, which we've been used to running for years? You know, what's its peculiarities? Um, how is it different than what we've been used to? I'm also going to put a link at the end of this video about a, uh, to a review that I just did in which I put about a 15 minute SDR primer in it. It's just sort of a uh, you know, boot camp for SDR so we can move our thinking towards how to judge these radios and better quantify are they good performers because they, you know, they fail differently and they have very different parameters. So looking at shifting the way we look at judging the quality of a receiver in particular uh, with an SDR. We're going to take a look at that. So check out that link if you want to sort of, you know, get a 15-minute primer on SDR from, you know, sort of the boot camp type of thing. Um, so first thing we're going to do is take a, a hit list look of the good things and the not so good things on the 7610. We're seeing white sand, eh, big deal. It's just a bunch of white sand. <laughs> But the very large array is, uh, is pretty impressive, over. So the great things about this uh, radio, <laughs> RX audio, it's amazing. It's just, just so much closer. I, like I, I said, digital Windex is what I call it. It's just getting closer to the actual transmitted uh, audio from the other station. And transmit audio is super clean. Uh, when I've compared it with other uh, the top-level radios of other brands, which I shall not mention the names of, otherwise I will not be able to sell them at a good price, um, it is just, the reports are that it is cleaner. It sounds like FM stereo compared to an AM station. That's what one station said, and I'm talking about my, my other radios have, I have studio mics and processors on them and all that stuff to bump up the audio quality. And, you know, I mean, uh, some of these radios are known to have fabulous audio quality, but because of the elegant simplicity of the SDR, this produces a very, very clean and natural sounding signal. The screen is big enough to not need an external monitor. It has the external monitor connection, but I don't see an advantage to it so far. Now, it, they are going to support touchscreen on further uh, firmware revisions, that's what they say. So you could put a you know a 10 or 12 inch touchscreen monitor on this and you know have an external touchscreen. Right now you can attach the mouse and you can go around the screen and click on signals. It doesn't allow you to go to the menu selections on the side here yet, but that may change as well. So the screen I find absolutely adequate to use. Um, the noise reduction, DSP noise reduction is superb. You kick it in and it really knocks back down the noise. Now we have the adjustment level and bring it up, but and it doesn't add a watery sound to the signal. Let's take a look over here. I was addicted to ham radio. So anyway, we uh, moved out here and it was about, uh, oh gosh, uh, what, uh, 12, 13 years later that I finally got it. Off. I asked her if I could get back in ham radio. I just had a dream about the Elmer that taught me ham radio from Garland. And uh, so anyway, we moved back in. Uh, the radio business here, we got it. Uh, so there we go. None of that uh, underwater sound, which is really nice. Um, and it's completely adjustable. Uh, tuning around on this radio is just superb. The main tuning dial is not super heavy. And I, I heard some people say, well, you know, it should be a little heavier. Some of the others are. Uh, but 
as soon as I started tuning around, I realized I am flying around the band here really fast. And what is really great, of course, with ICOM that nobody else does really I don't think anybody else does it, is that progressive tuning rate, where as soon as it detects you moving faster, it gears up the tuning rate, and bam, you're right out, of, you know, flying across the band here. So it's so easy to dial in the signal and immediately, uh, you know, get going. Boom. Oh. So there you are, you're back. You faded right out. The hand mic. The, uh, it's the totally excellent. Hand wow. Hand I mean, when's the hand mic great? Of course, these are just condenser microphones, and they should be good, uh, but wow, with the bass and treble adjustments on transmit, this hand mic is totally usable. I've switched over to the uh, ICOM desk mic, and uh, they were like, oh, no difference. Well, no difference is great. <laughs> so fabulous. And plus, I have to say, this rig looks great. And I'm just going to, you know, fess up that I do judge how the, you know, if I want the radio, if it does look great, and another radio is just not nice looking, I'm going to, that's going to weigh in. You got to look at this thing every day. It's got to have a nice, beautiful screen and this polished uh, black look that they've got with some gloss buttons here on the on the band selector. That's pretty slick. I, re I really do like the way it looks and it does weigh in on my, on my decision. Um, the second receiver in this is is absolutely uh, the same as the as the first receiver. So, Bamo over from all the busted tubes, the uh, uh, connectors on the now back I can for just, coax. You can have them track exactly together and have them hooked to different antennas, or you can go ahead and just be copying ready on this one over here, or PSK, and then pop over to the right side and be tuning around, or you know whatever you want to do. Um, and it's really two completely independent receivers of identical quality. So. You know, there we go. And you can put these displays so they're above each other or, or, or side by side. I prefer side by side. Um, the selectivity seems to be just about perfect. And, you know, I, I don't have the numbers yet, but what I'm saying is if you're near a really strong signal, you really don't hear it unless the guy has splatter in him. You know, if you, he does have IMD products and nasties on the side, which a lot of people are overdriving the radios and sound terrible. You will hear, you know, you, whatever's out there, you're going to hear it on this thing. So, metal model maker while oh, I was working, so I'm able to oh, straighten out the camera. On the wrong, on the wrong radio here. It turned out to be a nice uh, working transmitter, but I, I couldn't believe okay, it. Okay, so I anyway, uh, and the sensitivity also seems to be higher than my other radios, about 3 dB higher. So I'm talking about the noise floor, uh, you know, the you're seeing a little bit more hiss out there because I have a lot of locally generated hiss, and uh, the signal itself is, is stronger. So uh, it's very interesting. And I just noticed that compared to the others, that, that that is the case. So it's very easy to manipulate the radio and get around to where you want to go and you get it moving around here. The only thing that I am you know, going to complain about, and that is next, is this, and I'll mention it again, is it takes three keystrokes to go between VFO and memory. And I do have a little workaround on that. You could set up these to be tracking all the time, the two different receivers. Have this one in memory and this one in VFO, and then you could just use the change button to swap between them, and that would put you between VFO and memory pretty quickly. It's not an ideal solution, but it does help. But, you know, three buttons to select uh, between VFO and memory. Uh, that's a bit much, folks. You could have taken the timer button, which I will never use, and make that, that button, or one of the other buttons that we just don't use that much. So maybe uh, in a firmware re revision that could be done. Uh, on the not-so-great stuff, I just mentioned that. That's, that's my number one pet peeve. Uh, and there are buttons that you don't use much that are present. Like, I'm never going to use timer. Uh, I don't know if you, any of you set this up. To, you know, It's going go to go to sleep 60 minutes after uh, you know, I, I, I leave the radio on fall asleep, or I have it come on at 3 o'clock every day automatically it's not something i find anybody would use much and this radio does not have a lot of uh customizability in the menus we have a quick menu over here and um they don't allow you to add or delete things from this quick menu which i find sort of bizarre being there's an up and down arrows unless i have overlooked it uh and i hope i have but i don't see that yet so maybe maybe i'm wrong on that i i hope i'm wrong Next is that the transmitter does not go wider than 100 hertz to 2900 hertz. And I find it sort of strange that the receiver can go out to 3.6 kilohertz on SSB, but the transmitter is still restricted to their traditional bandwidth settings. So this is very much a propagation of what you've seen on the previous radios. 
it can make a gorgeously beautiful sounding signal within three kilohertz. And I know a lot of people are absolutely against anybody transmitting wider than three kilohertz on sideband. But in the spirit of experimentation and such, uh, we certainly should be uh, responsibly allowed to uh, play with that if we bought a radio like this. So I'd say, hey, let us go a little bit wider. It does and can produce an awesome sounding signal at three kilohertz wide, so I'm not very much concerned with that. Another thing that I found sort of strange was most SDRs have a filter overlay on the signal that you're looking at. In other words, when you adjust the bandwidth, you can see the filter on top of the signal and its width so that when you see the waterfall, you can conform the bandwidth of your radio to exactly how wide the actual signal is. And that does not exist on this radio. Uh, you do have the audio scopes and this kind of thing, and you can see the bandwidth here, and you can see the effect of changing the received bandwidth on it, but you don't get a an, what I call an overlay thing, which uh, the SDR dongles have, the flex radios have and such. So it's not something that they couldn't put in there, and I would suggest adding it such that when you were adjusting your passband tuning or shifting it around, it superimposed the, the bandwidth on it in a little window and then faded out slowly afterward. That would be sort of keen. And my last, uh, I don't know, complaint, if you want to call it that, is that the antenna tuner is a very narrow capability antenna tuner at 100 watts. It will only tune 3 to 1 or less out of an antenna. Your antenna must be pretty darn close to resonant for it to just take out a little SWR. And it's just odd that... Uh, a lot of other radios and previous radios could do that. This radio will allow you to do a, a, an antenna that is not resonant and is beyond 3 to 1 if you go and select a emergency mode in the radio, but it restricts you to 50 watts output at that point uh, to be safe on the tuner. So obviously the tuner is incapable of handling a full power level at antennas that are uh, pretty much off resonance. So there you go, sort of basic overview of operating the radio on the ground. Um, it is super easy uh, to use and a pleasure to use to move around the bands quickly and hop around and make QSOs. Uh, it's just a really fast and slick operator. It has excellent intelligibility on the receive for, for older ears like mine. Um, I call it you know, digital Windex, basically. It's as though you wiped a whole nother layer away of fog and distortion between you and that original uh, generated RF signal. Uh, it's just cleaner and clearer and demonstrably so because when I switch back and forth between even top level radios from, from the old days, the Superhead days, they sound like mud compared to this. And people haven't really mentioned that quality and that kind of quality is what we're really looking for in making a jump to SDR. You are closer to the original signal. There's less physically in between you and it as far as circuitry and mixing pro all those mixers and triple quadruple conversion all this stuff because every time you add one of those sections you add another little bit of distortion and a little bit of hiss and you know and other possible problems that might show up from using more and more stages. So the simpler the the path between RF to AF is the more the fidelity can be you know held together and the higher fidelity system you're going to have in general. Now that said, if you are listening on the bands and you hear a good clean signal, uh, you're going to really hear it loud and clear. But if you have a guy with a lot of distortion or IMD products, you're going to hear those too because this is really faithfully bringing in everything out there. Um, I have noticed that this receiver seems to be about 3 dB more sensitive in general than my other receivers. I'm just talking, you know, S meter reading, noise floor and everything. It's just, you know, it's, it's even more sensitive, which is sort of interesting to me. You'd think it might be more similar, but when it's gonna come down to digging out a digital signal, you know, on the digital modes, it's really on the hairy edge down there. You might really have an advantage with this radio. Um, the caveat to that is that general background noise levels, especially in suburban environments, are going to exceed the noise floor on this radio. So it's, you know, and many radios. So the, the darn truth of it is, our background noise is from plasma TVs and drills and electric fences and everything, which I have a ton of around here, really sort of negate enjoying the absolute maximum dynamic range down to the floor in a lot of these modern receivers. Um, you know, I'm just going to have to say that. 200 watts would have been nice. Could have done it with 12 volt finals in this radio. And it does make a difference because I switched to one of my 200 watt radios. Uh, I'm, I'm getting through the pileup all the time without the amplifier on. But uh, many times I have not been heard at 100 watts. So compared to the competition, I'm going to have to say at the present introductory price point, it's not really competitive. Uh, 
They had to bump it up, I think, because they don't want to have a radio that's so inexpensive that you know performs within 5% of their top of the line at such a low price point. So the price sort of crept up the possible introductory price to where it sits now. But conversely, we know that's going to drop. So those of you who have patience and want to wait, I'm really thinking that something around $3,200 is a more appropriate price for this radio. And I think we're gonna see that before Dayton of next year. Certainly that's been the pattern, you know, with, uh, with these radios. So go ahead, you know, weigh the data out there, take a look at all the videos, and uh, take what I've said, make your way your decision. And remember that <laughs> you could get a 7300 if you haven't bought a radio like this yet, and test that out for a while there. Prices have dropped quite a bit. You get about 75% mm, of the performance or more out of that radio compared to this radio. So you might wanna, Get your, put your toe in the pool with that one and check it out. And turn it over, maybe upgrade later. So, again, it's been a pleasure. Take care. We'll see you next time.